Welcome to Certification Terminal. Question number one. What option most effectively offers audit management insights into potential enhancements in the organization's IS audit function? Option A, quality management policies. Option B, post-audit quality reviews. Option C, auditor performance reviews. Option D, auditor independence checklists. The correct answer is Option B, post-audit quality reviews. These reviews occur after the audit process has been completed. They involve evaluating the effectiveness and efficiency of the audit procedures, documentation, and overall audit process. By conducting post-audit quality reviews, audit management can gain valuable insights into the strengths and weaknesses of the IS audit function. This assessment helps in identifying areas for improvement and implementing necessary changes to enhance the performance of future audits. These are the most effective option for offering audit management insights into potential enhancements in the organization's IS audit function as they involve a systematic evaluation of the audit process and provide valuable feedback for improvement. Question number two. If a certified information systems auditor is tasked with reviewing a potentially fraudulent transaction and intends to assess the transaction, what should be the subsequent step? Option A, ensuring independence of IS auditor is maintained. Option B, ensuring the integrity of evidence is maintained. Option C, reviewing all relevant information. Option D, setting a honeypot trap. The correct answer is, Option C, reviewing all relevant information. This is crucial for a thorough investigation. The CISA needs to gather all available data related to the transaction, such as transaction details, system logs and audit trails, user activity associated with the transaction, communication records, security controls in place. Question number three. What is the objective of conducting regression testing for a program? Option A to check new requirements have been met. Option B, to check whether the changes have introduced any errors in the unchanged code. Option C, to check the new code contains errors. Option D, to check the discrepancies exist between functional specifications and performance. The correct answer is. Option B, to check whether the changes have introduced any errors in the unchanged code. This option accurately reflects the primary objective of regression testing. It involves retesting the unchanged parts of the program to ensure that modifications or updates have not inadvertently introduced errors or side effects. By verifying the integrity of the unchanged code, regression testing helps maintain the overall reliability and functionality of the program despite changes made elsewhere. Therefore, this option is the correct objective of conducting regression testing for a program. Question number four. What qualities would be the most appropriate to define an integrated test facility comprehensively? Option A, technique to verify system processing. Option B, technique to generate test data. Option C, technique to verify system integration. Option D, technique to validate the ongoing operation of the system. The correct answer is. Option C, technique to verify system integration. This option directly addresses the comprehensive nature of an integrated test facility. Such a technique is crucial for testing how different modules or components of a system integrate and interact with each other. It ensures that the system functions as a unified whole and that data flows seamlessly between various parts of the system. Integrated test facilities do involve verifying processing of test data, but this is secondary to the focus on integration. Integrated test facilities may use specific techniques for test data generation, but this is a means to an end, not the defining characteristic. Integrated test facilities are not designed for ongoing validation, but the insights gained during testing can inform ongoing monitoring processes. Question number 5. What approach is adopted specifically for unit testing? Option A, black box. Option B, top up. Option C, bottom up. Option D, white box. The correct answer is. Option D, white box. White box testing, also known as glass box testing or clear box testing, 
involves testing based on an understanding of the internal workings of the system or application. In unit testing, developers typically employ white box testing techniques to verify the correctness of individual units of code by examining their internal logic, paths, and data structures. White box testing is specifically adopted for unit testing as it allows for thorough testing of individual code units in isolation, ensuring their functionality and reliability. Question number six. Why is it crucial to conduct security risk assessments frequently rather than just once within an organization? Option A, control effectiveness may weaken. Option B, compliance with legal and regulatory standards should be reassessed. Option C, threats to the organization may change. Option D, controls should be regularly tested. The correct answer is. Option C, threats to the organization may change. The cybersecurity landscape is constantly evolving. New threats, vulnerabilities, and attack methods emerge all the time. A one-time assessment captures a snapshot of the security posture at a specific point in time. Frequent assessments ensure the organization stays updated on the evolving threat landscape and can adapt its security controls accordingly. Question number seven. What is the significance of employing regression testing throughout a system development project? Option A, system testing will address high probability errors. Option B, errors have not been introduced to the system during modification. Option C, the test plan is based on an analysis of the impact of past testing. Option D, the results of testing are statistically valid. The correct answer is. Option B, errors have not been introduced to the system during modification. This option accurately reflects the significance of employing regression testing throughout a system development project. Regression testing ensures that modifications or updates made to the system do not inadvertently introduce new errors or disrupt existing functionality. By retesting previously working components of the system, regression testing helps maintain the stability and reliability of the system as it evolves during development. The most significant aspect of employing regression testing throughout a system development project is to ensure that errors have not been introduced to the system during modification. This proactive approach helps maintain the integrity and reliability of the system as it undergoes changes during the development lifecycle. Question number eight. What is the optimal course of action for the organization's sole IS auditor who is tasked with both designing controls for a new system and conducting an audit after its implementation? Option A, respond positively to the request because there is no conflict of interest. Option B, inform the audit committee of the conflict of interest. Option C, request external audit to perform an independent review of the advice to be provided. Option D, decline to undertake the design role because of the conflict of interest. The correct answer is. Option B, inform the audit committee of the conflict of interest. Informing the audit committee of the conflict of interest is the optimal course of action for the organization's sole IS auditor in this scenario. It promotes transparency, upholds professional standards, and allows for appropriate measures to be taken to mitigate the conflict while ensuring the integrity of the audit process. Designing controls and then auditing their effectiveness creates a conflict of interest. The auditor might be less likely to identify weaknesses in the controls they designed themselves, compromising the objectivity of the audit. Question number nine. What is the principal objective of implementing an IT governance framework? Option A, to ensure compliance with industry regulations. Option B, to manage IT projects and initiatives. Option C, to conduct IT audits. Option D, to guide IT decision-making and behavior. The correct answer is. Option D, to guide IT decision-making and behavior. This option accurately represents the primary objective of implementing an IT governance framework. IT governance frameworks provide structures, processes, and mechanisms to guide decision-making within the IT function of an organization. They establish frameworks for making strategic IT investment decisions, prioritizing projects, managing risks, and ensuring alignment between IT initiatives and business objectives. 
Ultimately, the goal is to ensure that IT resources are utilized effectively and efficiently to support organizational goals and objectives. Question number 10. In data management, what does the term remote journaling refer to, considering geographically separate locations? Option A, capturing and saving transactions to two mirrored servers in-house. Option B, backing up transaction logs to an off-site facility. Option C, backing up bulk data to an off-site facility. Option D, capturing and saving transactions to different media types. The correct answer is Option B, backing up transaction logs to an off-site facility. This option accurately represents the concept of remote journaling in data management. Remote journaling involves capturing and saving transaction logs to a separate location, often in a different geographic area from the primary data center. This practice ensures that transactional data is securely stored off-site, providing resilience against disasters or failures at the primary site. It enables organizations to recover transactional data and restore operations in the event of a system failure, data corruption, or other unforeseen incidents. Therefore, backing up transaction logs to an off-site facility best aligns with the concept of remote journaling and data management, considering geographically separate locations. Thanks for watching. We'll meet you in the next video.